Welcome to the session on stock price analysis using Python's data visualization libraries. In this session, we will use libraries like Matplotlib and Seaborn. We will also use Pandas Data Reader and Y Finance Library. The Y Finance Library is one of the famous modules in Python, which is used to collect online financial data from Yahoo. We import all the required modules. We import NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and Seaborn. Now, we import the libraries that are required to read the data from Yahoo Finance. We import the Pandas Data Reader. We import Y Finance, which is the Yahoo Finance module. We suppress warnings thrown by any Python functions with warnings.filter warnings function. We will pull data for Citibank, HSBC, DBS Bank, Wells Fargo, and Credit Suisse from Yahoo Finance. We set a start date and an end date that we need to pass to Yahoo Finance to pull the data. We call the getDataYahoo function and pass the tickers to the function. We pass the start date and the end date to the function as well. We could pull a total of 756 observations for the five stocks. But why are there 30 columns? Let us take a look at the data we pulled. We noticed that the Jupyter Notebook does not show all the columns by default. So we set the display options to none to remove any constraints. Now, we can take a look at the data again, with all columns being displayed. Note that, we have got a data frame with multi-index columns. We see adjusted close, close, high, low, open and volume at one level, and then we have the five stocks for each of the attributes. Let us now, retrieve only adjusted close for all the stock symbols. We create a new data frame, namely, DF stocks adjusted close, and store the adjusted close data for all stocks. Note that in this data, we have some missing values. This is because, the data is not available in Yahoo Finance, for some reason. We now study the summary statistics of the adjusted close. Note that all of these actions can be done with other attributes like close, open, high, low, and volume as well. Let us now calculate the market capitalization for each of the stocks. We multiply the open price and the volume of each stock to calculate the market capitalization. So, we filter the open and the volume column in a new data frame, namely, DF OpenVol. We create a new data frame, DFMKT, to hold the market capitalization values. For each of the symbol, we create a new variable in the data frame that can store the calculated information. We make copy of the same syntax and simply change the name of the corresponding symbols. Also, we call the drop NA function to remove any rows with missing values. We set the figure size using RC params. We plot the chart by calling the plot function on the respective columns. Now, we simply make copies of the syntax and replace the column names for respective stock symbols. We set the chart attributes like title and the legend. We now view the multi-line graph, where each line represents the market capitalization of respective companies. We resize the figure to make the chart bigger. Let us study the pattern in adjusted close for HSBC Bank. We filter the adjusted close data for HSBC Bank in a new data frame. We use a line chart to plot the adjusted close price for HSBC Bank. We study the daily percentage change in the adjusted close price. We create a new column, namely, day percent change in the data frame. 
We use a readily available function, PCT underscore change function, to calculate the daily percentage change. Percentage change is given by previous price minus current price multiplied by 100 divided by the previous price. Because for the first data point we do not have any previous value, Python returns a null value. So we call the drop an A function to remove all rows with missing values. We now plot the daily percentage change of the adjusted closing price for HSBC. Here, you see the line chart for the daily percentage change of adjusted closing price. We plot the same data again using a histogram to study the distribution from a different angle. We simply copy the previous code and change the plot to hist for a histogram. Here, you can see the histogram plotted for the given data. It is always useful to visualize the data with multiple charts to get different perspective. The percentage change will be positive if the stock price has gone up and negative if the stock price has gone down. Let us categorize the daily percentage change into different categories. We define a function that can take the daily percentage change values as an input and label the value as one of the categories. For example, if the daily percentage change is greater than 6 it is bullish. If the value is less than minus 6, it is bearish, and so on. Now, we call the function to categorize the daily percentage change values. We store the labels in a new variable change type. We apply the lambda function. Let us take a quick look into the labels that got created. Using a bar chart, let us study the distribution of the change type of daily percentage change. We now use the count plot from the Seaborn module to plot a bar chart. The count plot function allows you to change the vertical bar chart to horizontal chart with the orient parameter. Let us make a comparative study of the adjusted closing price of all stocks together. We set the figure size. We plot the line chart with the plot function. We make copy of the plot command and simply replace the respective columns for each stock. We change the label parameters for each of the stocks. We change the colors as well to identify the lines for each stock. We call the legend function. What we see here is a multi-line plot that plots the adjusted closing price for all the five stocks in a single chart. Let us now study the distribution of the adjusted closing price for each stock individually. But we plot the distributions for all stocks in a single GO using a grid. We first reshape the data using pandas's melt function. Notice that the melt function creates two columns, symbol and values. Now, create a grid to plot the charts. We use the facet grid function from the Seaborn module. We set share X and share Y to false to let each chart use its own range of values. Now, we map each of the plots in the grid. We use the distplot function from the Seaborn module to plot the distribution plot for each of the variable. You can analyze the distribution of each of the variables. Next, we study the correlation between the stock's adjusted closing daily percentage change. We remove all rows with missing values. We set the figure size more of a square dimensions. Seaborn provides us with a functionality to set the styles for the plots. We finally use the pair plot from Seaborn module to plot the correlation plots between each of the variables. We get to see the scatter plot matrix that shows the correlation of adjusted close between each stocks. Thank you. Happy learning.